This video is the Crunchy Postgres for Cloud Foundry overview. We'll go over what the service is, how to install it, creating a service, and finally using the service. The Crunchy Postgres service for Cloud Foundry allows developers to use Postgres and PostGIS with their application. This service is on demand, meaning developers get an entire Postgres service entirely for their application. The on demand service has many advantages. There's better performance by utilizing the hardware to its fullest. There's more security through isolation of the service. And finally, it can be customized to your application's needs. In order to keep the service healthy and usable, Crunchy Postgres has auto failover built in. This means that the system can detect anomalies with the Postgres servers and repair them accordingly. In the event that a primary database fails, one of the few read replicas will be promoted to a primary. The service will automatically reconfigure itself once a failover occurs. Disaster recovery is essential to any healthy database service. Crunchy Postgres for Cloud Foundry takes daily backups to ensure that in an event of a disaster, copies of your data are ready. And finally, Crunchy Postgres was built from the ground up with high availability in mind. This service is availability zone aware to ensure that the service is still usable even during an outage. Next, we will show the installation of the service. Here we have the Ops Manager dashboard. This is where tiles are uploaded and configured. The first thing we'll do is upload the Crunchy Postgres tile to Ops Manager. With the tile uploaded, now we can add it to Ops Manager. You'll see that the tile is orange. This means that it's unconfigured. Let's configure it. The first thing we have to do is configure the availability zones and networks that the on-demand tile will be using. In this case, we'll be using Net1 for our broker and Net2 to deploy the services to. Next, we'll configure global properties. These are some of the services that the tile uses, such as console, HA proxy, and then the smoke tests. Here we're configuring the server sizes that these will be deployed to, the disks that will be attached to that. Finally, we'll choose an availability zone to deploy these services to. Then click Save. Next, we'll configure the plans. The first is the small plan. This is the smallest offering that the Postgres service offers. Here we're going to choose a server size for the small plan and a disk that will be attached to it. Saving that, we'll move on to the rest of the plans. If you're unsure what sizes to make these, in the documentation there is a recommended table of sizes for each of the plans. Saving that, let's look at the errands. The errands will run after installation. In this case, it will automatically register itself with Cloud Foundry and run the acceptance tests. Next, we'll see the resources that these servers will be deployed to, such as the acceptance tests and the broker register. These are fine as default. Finally, we'll look at the OS stem cell image that the on-demand service will use. Now that the tile is configured, we're ready to install. This will take some time as it has to install the servers and run the acceptance tests. Once it's complete, you should see success. The tile is now installed. With the tile installed, we're now ready to use it. This is Apps Manager and what developers will be seeing. 
In the marketplace, you'll see the Crunchy Certified Postgres offering. Clicking on that, you can see that we have four plans, small, medium, large, extra large, and some information about those plans. Let's choose the medium. First, we need to give it an instance name. I'm going to call it My Service. Next, we need to fill in a, few, a little bit more information about the service, such as the DB name. In this case, I'm going to call my database MyDB. We need a username. This is going to be my user. And then some meta information, um, the owner name, and an owner email. For additional information on how to customize the tile, look at the documentation. Now that we've filled that out, we're ready to create the service. This will take some time as it's on demand and asynchronous. Once the service is ready, it will indicate that the instance provisioning is completed. It is now ready to be used by applications. With our service deployed, let's now bind an application to it. We can see that there are currently no apps bound to this. We're using the medium plan and our service is called my service. Here we see we have an app running called CFPG Admin 4. This is a GUI database management software that we provide for our tile. There are currently no services bound to this app, so let's bind a service. Here we're going to choose the service that we just created, My Service. Now that the service is bound to the app, we can, we can view the credentials. First, let's log into PG Admin 4. The first thing we need to do is configure our server. We'll right click on servers, create a new server. First, we have to give it a name. Here we'll call it primary DB. Next, we need connection info. Looking at the service, we can view the credentials. First, we need the host name. We need the database name, in this case, MyDB. We need the username. And finally, we need the password. We are now connected to the primary database in the service. Before we use it, let's add another group. This will be the replicas. So we'll give it a name, replica DB. We must fill out the form again. So we need the host name. We need the database name. We need the username. The password. Now, in order to get to the read replicas, we need to change the port. In this case, the read replicas can be found at 5433 port. And we'll save that. We're now connected to the replicas. So let's use the service a little bit. Let's create a table on the primary database. Using the query tool, we can write SQL. Create a table called test with a column ID of the type integer, and we'll insert a value into that table. And we'll run that query. It is run successfully. Now that table should be available in the read replica pool. 
and we can see that it is the test table is there. If we look at the columns, we can see our column ID is there, and we can view the data. The value we just inserted, zero. Now this is a read-only server, meaning I should not be able to create tables or insert any values into the tables from the read, from the read replicas. And indeed I can. I could see here I got an error saying this is a read-only transaction.